Earlier, I had an in-depth discussion about the Sydney hostage siege and the threat from lone wolves with Jeffrey Simon. He's the author of Lone Wolf Terrorism, Understanding the Growing Threat. Jeffrey says there's a wide spectrum of terrorists who are part of big organizations. We have different kinds of lone wolves. It's not just the common perception today of the Islamic extremists. We've had right-wing white supremacist lone wolves. We have single-issue lone wolves, uh, eco-terrorists. And we also have, of course, the political types of lone wolves. So it's a broad spectrum. And also, as I was doing the research and the writing of the book, I realized that we can't really fall into the trap of thinking of a single profile of the lone wolf, because we've had lone wolves that have been young teenagers, and we've also had an 88-year-old white supremacist who attacked the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. a number of years ago. So the lone wolf threat is, is as diverse as the threat that's posed by organized groups and cells. So are they more nimble, more innovative, more dangerous than, than these organized cells in some respects? I see it to be that case, mainly because the lone wolf is not burdened by any group decision-making process that organized groups and even cells have to go through, getting approval for their plans, hashing out details, also worrying about repercussions. The lone wolf is free to think up any scenario he or she wants and then act upon it. And that's what makes them very dangerous and innovative, because they live outside the box in life, and that therefore they can think outside the box in terms of perpetrating attacks. That's why some of the innovative attacks we've had in terrorism history has been the work of lone wolves, such as the first anthrax letters attacks, which was believed to be committed by a lone wolf, the first hijackings in the United States, the first vehicle bombing. All these kinds of incidents were the acts of lone wolf terrorists. Can we be made safe from uh, these lone wolves? I mean, is there anything that the investigators, uh, the, the police officials can do to prevent these sorts of attacks? Well, definitely in terms of closed-circuit television monitoring, in terms of uh, real-time monitoring to try to find people who are acting suspiciously in public settings, leaving unattended packages, um, being able to detect packages with biological agents to be sent through the mail, and also in terms of looking for just the early warning signs, people who are exhibiting certain behavior that may be a sign that they're going to take violent action. But we don't really have the answers yet, and that's why it's a very difficult nut to crack. Um, there's no solution to terrorism as a whole. We know that because we have terrorism throughout history. And the lone wolf has added this dimension that makes it even more difficult for police and intelligence agencies, because there's no communications between members of a group to intercept. But the Internet is allowing the lone wolf to rise above, uh, you know, the surface, make themselves a little more visible, even though they may not realize that. And that gives us a little hope.